Back to our, our roundabout example, Jeff's wonderful uh, civil design uh, uh, skills there. Put that together for us. Really good example. So now we're going to jump. We're going to jump topics, okay, or, or pivot into the publishing process. So once you've established your business process about what item types you want to use within your within your world, uh, you really need to to um, understand what that publishing process has to offer. Per se. So let's talk a little bit about the the actual I model itself or the publication and what it is. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pivot back to the slide deck so I can go over a couple concepts. I'm going to come back, publish the model, and then we're going to look at it downstream. All right. Sorry about that. Now we get to the right slide. So understanding your I model publishing process, you need to understand a little bit about what it's doing as it as it, it does the publication. So. Once you begin your publication or right prior to it, it's going to ask you to define some of your settings. Uh, for instance, you know, where do you want to put it? Okay. Um, so where do you want to put the, the outbound I model? What do you want to do with the intermediate files? Intermediate files are generated per reference attachment. Uh, and then you have your package file. This is your final .i DGN. And then you have your, your .i model file, which contains... Uh, all of the the artifacts generated in, in that prior, you know, those prior uh, pieces, intermediate and package and so forth, or whatever it needs to send up to the iTwin process. The BIM format, now this is the key, the BIM format in, in 2.0, if you'll notice on the slide there, it's probably kind of hard to see right in here. That format, that BIM format is the key to this presentation. That is a SQLite database containing all of the item type data that Jeff and I have just talked about, right? So that's why I, I keep emphasizing on understanding your business process and your data. And that BIM, that BIM format will extract that data out to a usable um, format for other purposes. It could be mobility. Uh, it could be uh, asset management. Uh, it could be construction management, uh, on and on. There's all kinds of, of um, benefits for doing that. A uh, few other notes here. The synchronizer process, right? You have a couple of different ways to generate and keep these I models intact. So you have to understand when you want to publish them, right? What state of your design you want to you want to do a every every uh, submittal that you do for like 30, 60, 90 percent done in your design process. Uh, if you want uh, some kind of nightly repetitive um, synchronization process, you can also do this. Via the automation services and project wise, which could be a whole coffee corner on itself, you know, a whole other topic. Um, but you want to understand when you want to synchronize and 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 where you're going with that particular data. Okay. So now we're going to jump over to the uh, application process. So you're going to go ahead and identify, like I said, you know, if you want to rename it, what have you, you want to generate that single package. I'm going to remove the intermediates. This is typically how I do it. And I want to generate that 2.0 SQLite database. And that's really the key. And you want to do your publication. Now, a couple while this is publishing, I will, we probably won't sit and, and stare at this, but I want to make a couple of notes on what it's, you know, what it's doing. Again, it's checking integrity of the files, uh, integrity of the references. It's looking at the projection system in the file. Uh, and it builds those intermediates and then it reassembles and builds its package and so forth. Um, things to be aware if you're more CAD admi uh, from an administrative or management function, um, you need to understand your item type definitions. There are scenarios where you'll get into publishing problems and it'll fail one of two things that I've seen. It'll fail the I model generation uh, or it'll, it'll fail the, the BIM generation or, or a combination of, of you know, those. You've got to really know, and that's why I back up to that, that knowing your data, knowing your, your DGN libraries for your item types, understanding your definitions. And uh, so you can track it back to if you do have issues in production. And you remember the very early on in this presentation, I, I mentioned about, you know, ideas are, are one thing and implementation are really a, a completely separate you know, topic or, or six, to make them successful. You need to understand all the configuration, all your item type libraries, and then noting or adding to what Jeff had mentioned, 
once those library properties are used, they become a local resource uh, or part of your active file. Keeping those maintained and current is super, super critical. All right. So um, that, that did a publication. All right. And we're going to look at that I model here in just one, one second. I want to very quickly pivot over and look at the synchronization process. So here's the, the iTwin synchronization process. This actually takes whatever DGN file that you choose uh, or other formats, Revit and so forth, other connections that you choose, and allows you to automatically synchronize that model. It'll validate your, your connection. Uh, and then once it's done checking, it'll let you synchronize this. Now, the importance here is it will also allow you to do change set management between, I mentioned before, like a 30 or a 60 or a 90% submittal. Um, you can, if, as long as you understand your committal points, um, Bentley, one of the, the benefits of using the, the iModel process on their iTwin platform now uh, in their iModel JS libraries is that they manage change between one submittal or another. That is a, a huge topic, again, and just in itself is understanding change between uh, one particular submittal and another. But this synchronization engine is one way of doing it. I mentioned before, you can use ProjectWise uh, as another way of doing it. Um, and they, they all have their advantages and, and disadvantages and so forth. You know, so um, very good, good uh, piece of technology. And I like to show that. Now let's pivot. Let's pivot to the iModel itself. And I think that is uh, very, very important. And I'm going to um, switch over to. And we're going to take a look at this model. And this is a model that I, I published just, just prior to our uh, presentation here. And the key here, let me just go ahead and close this and reattach it. So this piece of software, it's any type of SQLite browser. So I'm going to start here so everybody understands. And I go back to you know giving Bentley a lot of kudos for what they did here. This SQLite database is, is a open source arena of data exchange. It makes for large volumes of uh, SQL type data available in a container that can be mobilized. It can be put uh, in, a, in a variety of situations for use cases. So uh, it, this is really the important part, okay? And so you can go ahead and, and you can open those files natively, okay? So I can go ahead and say, hey, this, there, there's that BIM file. Now you'll note, there's a lot of the other artifacts that are generated within these processes, okay? You'll see, you'll see tiling files, and we'll come to those here in a little bit as well. But I'm going to open that BIM file. And then we're just going to execute quick. Now, a couple things I'd like to note here. Depending on who, you know, what your role is, right, if you're a developer or what have you, Bentley gives you the iModel um, uh, in our iTwin JS libraries. There's so the JavaScript libraries behind this as well, and that make this more simplistic. And, and I'll show you those here in just a second. The key here, though, is you know I, I come from a you know really a data background. I like the database aspect. This actually allowed me to learn the process far better. I learned what tables contain the properties of the files that I extracted. Now. A couple of very key points here. The, the BIM file in itself, the schemas, the schemas are, are generated, you know, every time you, you publish your models. And they're the, uh, the table structures and, and the relevance, they're relevant to the bridge you're coming from, okay, the product you're coming from as far as the data that goes where. So whether or not you're coming from um, um, ORD or uh, Open Bridge Modeler, uh, Base MicroStation, uh, and for that, as a matter of fact, it's using something like Revit, you know, a whole different product sequence that Bentley handles as well. Uh, so, so that data is very, very important. Okay. And I like to, to keep it from a, a concept perspective right here. Anything that's considered a DGN custom component in this situation, our item types, uh, are, are held as a class definition in this table. 
that allows me to go ahead and and I just constructed a very very simple query, and I you know I said just go get those items, and I just put some really generic data in here, and I because I wanted to keep it simple. This you can get lost, and it's very hard to present this at this kind of finite level. So I like to really keep this as simple as possible. Say, hey, I've got some items in here, okay? Pay items coming from a particular library. I also have some information about uh, ownership. And you'll notice it transposes your values. And, and these are applied to the model I used, okay? Just to kind of give you a, a, a nice simplistic example. And in the scenarios that Jeff showed, it would get much, much more complex. The range of this query would gather a lot more data. The key here, though, is it's pulling those data by your initial element IDs they're generated on. So that is of utmost importance to understand that. Okay. So the data is there. Your item type data, not, it doesn't depend or it doesn't matter what product it came from. Yeah, it's extracted. You want to publish your eye models from the product they were generated on in most cases. I will vary on that a little bit. There's some scenarios where you could back to MicroStation and use it as the output to the BIM, but it just depends on what you're doing. And that I cannot stress that enough. Your your use cases, your your end goal has to be thought out and thought through, and, and you need to have conditions that um, you as an administrator or as a uh, uh, governance perspective can help your users understand it, okay? So now that's that's the iModel front of it, okay, as far as the BIM file. I want to go back to um, slide deck and cover a couple more things on the deck, and then we will um, continue on here. All right. So we talked a little bit about the output synchronization processes. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.